Welcome to the WTSA World Standardization Assembly being held here in New Delhi. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Daniel Goldscheider, who is the founder of the Open Wallet Foundation. Daniel, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for the invitation. Tell us a little bit about the Open Wallet Foundation and how it differs and, and, and what makes it special. So the Open Wallet Foundation is still very young. We got started in February of last year. And the idea was to focus on open source software. It is hosted at the Linux Foundation, the world's largest open source project. Linux, of course, but almost a thousand other open source projects as well. And the goal really was to bring everyone together who's interested to create code uh, for secure, interoperable digital wallets. And uh, from the get-go, we thought that it was important to have not just corporations, but also companies present in this endeavor. So we were the first Linux Foundation project with the Government-led Advisory Council. And then the UN reached out, and they were interested to contribute two code projects to Open Wallet. And uh, of course, we were very excited about that, but we also flipped the conversation and said, we have something we are interested to contribute to the United Nations. Uh, because the UN is the world's best convener for countries. And out of those discussions, the idea emerged to start the Open Wallet Forum. And the forum, unlike the foundation, is hosted at ITU. It's really going to be a safe space for governments to work with other governments as well as with the private sector in order to achieve globally interoperable verifiable credentials. Fabulous. And making it open source, of course, is going to give a lot more opportunities uh, uh, to advance this in all sorts of countries around the world. Yeah, you know, we had a conversation yesterday at GSS about uh, how open standards and open source software is playing together. Some people might say, you know, if you have open standards, why, why need open source at all? But when you look at a web browser, there are over 700 standards that factor into this browser. So even if everything you do, you do on top of open standards, there is still a lot of complexity in creating good reference code that is able to work with all those underlying standards. And that's the same for digital wallets. You know, wallets will hold your ID card, your passport, academic credentials, health credentials, digital assets, central bank digital currencies. And so there are a ton of standards, even within any one of those verticals. And so we believe that open standards and open source software are really two sides of the same coin. And they should work together in order to help people to create interoperable wallets. What about uh, cybersecurity? How, uh, how important is that? And uh, I mean, people, of course, are very concerned about their money, about losing their money. We read stories in the press every day um, about uh, people being scammed. And I know that uh, India is, uh, is c trying to combat that as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, digital wallets obviously uh, are one of those high profile targets. Um, so, yes, of course, you know, anything that wants to hold the most personal and the most crucial information of people needs to be as secure as possible. And some people will tell you that they hope for security in secrecy. That basically, if we want to make something secure, the best thing we can do is that we work on something, just the two of us, we don't tell anyone, and we hope that it's going to be secure. I believe fundamentally in a different model, which is security through transparency and through collaboration. So the idea is if you and I and a lot of other people are working together on a standard or on open source software, and we're bringing the smartest people we find in a room together, whether that room is physical, whether that room is virtual, but bring them together to work on standards or to work on software, I think uh, this can really yield the best results and hopefully, in this case, achieve really wallets that do fundamentally two things. One, they need to be secure and two, they need to be interoperable. You know, just like with, you know, when I think about ITU, it was probably great back in the day when you had a telephone network in your own country. And I don't know who was the first person who came up with the idea to say, ha, it's amazing that we can make phone calls to each other within a country, but how about making a call outside? And I think this is exactly what we want with digital wallets. We want wallets, obviously, 
to work within specific countries, but eventually people will really rightfully demand that their identity or their university degree is recognized anywhere in the world. You're quite right to use as, as an example. In fact, ICU predates the telephone. It was originally the International Telegraph Union. So uh, it, the people would uh, create uh, uh, message, would, would write messages and, and uh, transmit them via telegraph. But of course, then it, well, they wanted to go across borders as well, which absolutely um, stimulated that. And then, of course, as you say, to, to telecommunication uh, across countries uh, seamlessly. That's one of the things that ITU is obviously uh, helping to achieve. Finally, you've taken the time to be here. You've come. Uh, a fair way around the world here to be here in India. Just really wanted to find out um, what you hope to take away from this uh, participation in this conference. I think this is a phenomenal conference. Um, you know, the Prime Minister opened uh, the day today, which was fantastic to see the Prime Minister of a country with uh, over 1.4 billion people taking interest in global standards is fantastic. Um, and it's an opportunity to meet. Uh, with ITU, it's an opportunity to meet with a lot of other standardization organizations. Uh, you, know, you did a fantastic job in getting uh, IEC and ISO and IETF and many others to be here. And uh, if we want to achieve global interoperability, this is really what it takes. There are a lot of countries, a lot of standardization organizations, a lot of companies that are all working on digital wallets. And if everyone is just staying in their own silo, will never get to interoperability. So I am incredibly excited about being here and the work that ITU is doing. And I hope it's my first, but not my, my last. Daniel Goldscheider, founder of the Open Wallet Foundation. Thank you very much indeed for joining us in the studio today. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again very soon, perhaps at, an, at another ITU event. That would be great. Thank you very much again. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on our podcast channels, wherever you get your podcasts from. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.